Hey guys, welcome to TGS. Today, we're going to be talking about GunFit. Wait, you say, we have talked about this before. Yeah, we have. It was like three and a bit years ago. It was one of the first videos we did. So, we've changed. I've changed. Let's talk about GunFit a little bit slower, a little bit more in depth perhaps, and talk about some of the stupid nuances that might come into play. So before we go any further, it's probably worth just outlining what GunFit is. And we're going to be talking today mostly about shotwear completely about shotgun fit, but fit for rifles is also very important. Gun fit is how this entire back section of the gun is custom made for your body to make your gun mount as consistent as possible, which allows you to see down the rib consistently and shoot consistently. And that gun fit is comprising of three things. Fit into the shoulder, fit into the face, and the fit of your eye versus the rib. You can't adjust your eyes. That probably is unclear and I shall retract that. But hey, let's start with this. So I'm gonna say that it's about keeping your eye down the rib. So this is the, the main component of fit, is keeping your eye looking straight down the rib. To do that, one needs to have the gun fitted into your shoulder correctly so that your gun mount can work. And one needs to keep your face on the same place on that stock every time not in an uncomfortable, but in a natural position. All right, let's start at the back of the gun, because this is kind of the thing that most people think. The actual butt plate of the gun. What gun fitting can be done with that? Well, first and foremost is comfort. And this is a, a matter of different things. You're looking to get as much shoulder contact as humanly possible. So if we pop this stock off and actually fit it, Everybody has a hole in their pocket, a hole in their shoulder where that gun will lie comfortably. That can change. It can sit like this, it can sit like this, depending on the makeup and shape of your body. How much fat you've got, how much muscle you've got, what your bone structure is like, every single human is completely different. Height and width are the first ones. To be honest, most pads come in a very generic size and shape. I have made in the past ones that are very small. I've extended one to be very large because actually, Fitting the surface area nicely is important. Beyond that, angle. So the actual cast at hit, no, let's do pitch first. The actual distance, the length of pull to the toe and the heel can dictate how much this stock pad goes like this or like this. You're looking for, again, complete shoulder contact or as complete shoulder contact during a regular shot as possible. If you have too much toe, it's gonna to dig in a lot. If you have too much heel, it won't dig in quite so much, but you'll just find a real inconsistency of mount that will drive your gun into a lower position. That means you're gonna to have to arch your body into more uncomfortable positions than necessary. To put it into a visual perspective, a gun, I mean, this is a bit extreme, isn't it? Can go anywhere between these different angles to create the perfect fit at the angle of which you're gonna be holding that gun most consistently, which will be about there. About 35 degrees. Anything beyond that, then you'll rotate your body down. Anything below that, you'll generally drop your body into. Of course, if you're shooting trap and other disciplines, gun fit changes. We're going for a general sporter slash game fit. And of course, all of this varies as well, but we'll get into this a little bit later. Next is the actual cast, the cast at toe and the cast at heel. The overall cast of the gun, by the way, is important. And at this, we're talking the actual cast at the comb off or onto face. Cast off being off of a right-hander's face and cast on being cast onto a right-hander's face because all guns are built for right-handers. This is important, and we'll get to this when we're talking about this, but it is also important you get the right cast at toe. And when I say this, we've got your heel here. That gun can either go truly right-handed, if you like, or truly left-handed. And this is a lot of cast off at the toe, not a cast on at the toe. For example, a right-hander, the gun will sit most naturally if it's like that. A left-hander, the gun needs to go the other way to sit into that shoulder pocket. This is extreme. Obviously, you don't need quite that much, but some people really do. You'll find that most guns now, as a, a good example of a modern gun, are very ungenerous with their dimensions in terms of cast and roll, because actually, firstly, it's a bit harder, secondly, it's weaker, and thirdly, it'll fit less people. However, 
be aware that people are all very different, different shapes and sizes. And when you go and look at older guns, you'll notice that they did all sorts of stuff to get those guns fitted and shooting right. And they didn't really care too much about how they looked or being too far out of the box. Nowadays, a lot of people are vastly more concerned with resale value. Um, and as such, in, in England at least, having custom stocks made isn't the main thing. In other countries, it really is. In ours, it isn't. You know, people will go for minor modifications and won't go too whole hog unless they are genuinely invested in their shooting. Um, there you go. So, is this important? Oh yes, it really is. So this is in fact my gun. And when I made this gun for myself some years ago, I was a different shape. I did lived a different lifestyle. I was younger. I was less hunched over and rolled. I spent less time at a workbench. I was more flexible. And as such, I created my gun quite straight. I shot a very different style back then. I shot a very different, a different discipline. Times change, people change, which leads me into the most important part of this is that gun fit is a continuous thing. It's worth getting it checked every few years, really. You put on a stone that can change the entire game. And a stone, it's quite easy to put on over lockdown as we all discovered. So actually now, my gun needs to be canted a little bit more than it is. So actually I need to put a little bit more cast at toe. Probably not going to, probably just gonna make, have a new gun, a new stock made at some point. I just feel uh, too attached to this to start changing it and I shoot it adequately. But what I do find now that I never did before is I actually get a little bit of owie on my chest, whereas I never did before. I used to be able to roll, not roll the gun, but I held the gun differently. And so, accepting at this point that times change, your requirements in a gun stock will change. Body shape, body size will dictate how much cast at toe you need versus the cast at heel. The cast at heel being the point where your face attaches to the gun. The product on the back of the stock does matter a lot as well as does the actual shape and radius. You'll find some people need a convex, some people need a concave, some people will need a perfectly flat pad. More importantly, you'll also find that some people, generally bigger dudes, um, big muscle-bound people like Sam behind the camera there, will actually need little bits carved out of the side of their gun. And that's just about creating the most shoulder contact possible. You think if you have your uh, bulbous, beastie right shoulder and then your very large pec, like Sam behind the camera, actually, Trying to fit a square unit in there is either going to end up like that, uncomfortable, or like that, uncomfortable. You're going to dig in. So what you do is you cut an edge off so you can almost fit it into the gap. Make sense? So actually having a custom made pad or a custom back end of a gun to fit you if you're an odd shape or a big dude isn't a bad idea. Hence pad selection is important because obviously certain pads won't take that abuse and others will. Only ever seen trap shooters do this sort of thing. It can really make a gun less versatile. Not that that's an issue. And if you shoot a lot of trap, um, to be fair, I know some sporting shooters have done it as well. But it really is completely necessary for the majority of humanity. There you go. Like I said, choosing your pad, being convex, concave, whatever, according to your body size is important. Generally, women, this one suits well. Uh, skinny dudes, this one suits well. And average blokes, a flat pad, usually does quite well on. Whatever's comfortable to you, but whatever is good for you. And that is just that section there. Can really spend a lot of time getting that right and wrong. Yeah. Um, next, the comb. Given that guns really, the only things that are important on a gun are the shoulder, so that is the pad and the face, and that is the comb. This is a lie, actually. Grip. There's a fourth thing, and I don't even come to this. The grip is very important. The actual pistol grip, or grip, where you hold the gun in your hand is important. Where it, it's the points where you contact the gun, your shoulder, your face, and your hand, and your eye, obviously. So those are important. I forgot grip, can't believe I forgot that, that was terrible. Comb. Comb height, comb shape, comb width, and comb cast. All of these subjects are very important. Comb height is measured thus. You put this rib on a flat surface and you take your measurement from there and from there and that will give you a traditional comb height. Parallel combs exist, they're a bit different. So generally what you'll get is you'll end up with something like this. 
your straight line there, you'll get drop one, drop two. And this will be, I don't know, let's say one and a quarter and two and a quarter inches. And this can vary massively, massively. Let's take into account now that actually just conventional shotgun stocks aren't the only thing on the market. There is also Monte Carlos that will have three points. You'll get one and two. And actually this can then be parallel pitched and you get the drop at the back. Again, all to do with body size, body shape and your requirements, your requirements. And we'll get into that when we look at this adjustable comb gun and the adjustable pad gun in a second. This will dictate how high your eye is versus the rib. A higher comb, your eye will move up and over the rib and you'll see more rib. A lot of people look for a perfectly flat shooting gun, but actually that's not always the perfect solution. This has a huge amount to do with body shape, gun mount and face contact. If you're there, slamming your head down on a gun, it may appear like you need a very high comb. But actually, it's a really important point where a gun fitter will need to be with you whilst you're shooting to do the perfect gun fit. Because actually a lot of people who are like, oh yeah, that's perfect when they get out shooting, actually, they shoot quite openly. And suddenly they'll be seeing a lot more rib than they let on whilst they're there squidging their head down onto a one and a quarter and two inch drop stock. Important. The other thing here is cast. Cast is the diversion from the center line, as I said before. How much this stock is bent this way or this way. For a right-hander, if there was no cast, your eye would be over here. You need your eye to be bang in the center of this action, in an ideal world with the perfect mount. Getting the cast and the comb height correct is important. For example, if the cast was correct and the comb too high, or it appeared that the cast was correct and the comb was too high, so you drop that comb down, suddenly the chances are you'll have a little bit too much cast because your eye will suddenly be dropping into the gun and over the gun a little bit more. I know that in a perfect mount scenario that may not be the case and every person's gun mount is important, which is why, before I move any further, there is different levels of gun mount. You can check, you can do a gun fit, a basic gun fit, and actually get a gun 90% of the way. But to truly understand a gun fit is a very large, long and laborious process with multiple stages. And you do need to have some consistency in your shooting or at least be at a point in your shooting style where you're doing this, not this. Or else there's very little point investing the serious amount of time and money that would require to do a proper gun fit. Like I said, most people will only watch this and never have a damn thing changed to their gun because it doesn't really matter that much. Um, and most people will wrap themselves around a gun fairly well, which you can do. So, cast. Cast is generally measured here at the heel. Length is kind of important by the way as well, but I'm gonna mix the, the, that as a, a bridging gap between the face and the grip. Should have added that in as well, but it's, it, it's a cursory issue. It's a cursory issue. It's an important thing. I'm gonna write it down. Length. Length is always important. That it is, Sam, that it is. So getting your cast right and your comb height right is a vital to putting your eye in the right place on that gun. We at this point take a step back. The height of the pad is also important. If, for example, a bad choice, but I needed my comb up here to shoot the gun, but my body was such that I couldn't sort of get that pad, when the pad was right, the gun was down here, this is where Monte Carlo's come from. We did a video on Monte Carlo's back along. Go and watch that for a little bit more information. But this is where this sort of thing comes into play. Getting the pad fit right into the shoulder without having to contort one's body, and contorting one's body will lock one's body up, is of vital importance. So getting this right in the shoulder without being too high, too low, or too uncomfortable to get in the correct position, and this right is of vital importance. Mix that with the cast. And cast is an interesting one as well, because cast we, we think of generally now as just bending a gun off the, its center line, for the most part, because actually that's what we spend so much time doing, because so few people go for custom stocks. So actually what we're having to do is cast that off. 
from here at an angle over there because that's kind of what our ability is to do with that wood as much as we can do a few other things it has limitations working with standard wood so if we have let's say the action block that is a gun with a lot of cast okay suddenly actually to get one's face in the correct position that will now maybe be out of the shoulder pocket so what happens if the shoulder pocket is there? Well, what we need to do is that. That is actually a stock configuration that was made some years ago. Nowadays, we get around it with having adjustable combs um, because it's a lot easier than having a custom stock or actually physically taking your stock that is straight and carving a section out to get one's face into the correct position while still maintaining a good shoulder position. Really should have thought this video a lot through. I didn't think it'd be quite so long and laborious, but trying to get all my thoughts out in line is, is often hard. So what one does at this point is pop open your budget Allen keys that we all own a set of. Take out an Allen key that might be appropriate that is too big, flick over, realize you're using Imperial and that is being a Beretta will obviously be a metric three millimeter Allen key. So simply you just move your two towers over in something like this and you're going to achieve the right face cast and the correct shoulder cast for you. Given that those two cast points are actually different, face cast, shoulder cast, and then your toe cast. There's three actual measurements there that you do need to be aware of, not that, again that many people do however if you don't like adjustable combs or don't want to fit one to your gun or anything like that there is either the barbaric route of carving a bit out that's not barbaric because nobody cares what your gun looks like or what it's worth as long as you can shoot it or a custom stock hey right. so having moved that over suddenly the face cast is correct and the shoulder cast is correct as opposed to me having to have the gun out there outside of my shoulder to be able to get a mount where my eye looks down the rib. Interesting. And it's at this point you're thinking, how can I support this channel? I like this channel. And the answer is twofold. Firstly, join as a member, button down there. We love your support. There's extra content. And secondly, brand new merch. That's merchandise to people of my generation. Go check it out, the link in the description. There's also warm stuff because it is very cold. Let's crack on. So adjustable combs are great. You can achieve your face cast versus shoulder cast balances perfectly. You can even create a bit of Monte Carlo on your guns. There's a lot you can do with an adjustable comb. Like I said, they look how they look, but they are extremely useful. What is important is the gun is lower or less far or not to a million miles away from your dimensions to start with. If you mix a adjustable comb with an adjustable pad, which we have here, I don't even have that Allen key for it, look at that. You can sort of create both of all of these bits correctly. It'd be really handy if I'd had a adjustable comb and adjustable pad gun at this point. But you will see by actually rotating the adjustable pad correctly in the shoulder, and this is where shoulder fit comes in, it can stop one rolling the gun, which will account for a lot of cast. You'll find when a gun is too straight and someone's actually having to roll it in their shoulder to get it in a comfortable shoulder pocket, the comb is then turned into face. The cast appears significantly less to them and as such that it becomes just an uncomfortable situation. So having a pad that is actually set at the right angle, suddenly one can keep the gun much straighter in the shoulder. But as you can see now, where I've adjusted that, that actually sits outside of my comfortable shoulder pocket whilst keeping it on my face. So I would actually need to keep it at that angle but bring this pad into the center of the gun to get my shoulder fit perfect at the gun level and my face to stock thing consistent. Otherwise, he says, i use this one for that example, turning this gun in my shoulder to a place where it's actually more comfortable than straight, leaves me with a canted gun, my eye over the top of the rib as opposed to where it needs to be. There you go a bit different, some more information that's completely useless. Might not be useless, hopefully it doesn't confuse everybody too much. I suppose that's what we're looking for here. So down shoulder, 
We've done face. We've done eye. Eye really is only important versus the eye versus the rib. And when I say gun fit for the eye, the whole point is it is centered around your eye and what you would like to see. Be that, you see a lot of people go, oh, you can see that much rib, that's too much. Actually, that's not a bad amount as long as you're seeing a consistent amount and you build that into your shooting style or so on and so forth. It is important, I would say, to have a touch more comb height than you need a lot of the time. I find that a more versatile feature in a gun than a gun that is too low. And you're either ending up, like, when you do put your face down too far, you just, you see, you see nothing. You see the back of the action like this. And your top lever there and the action there. And you go, I can't see my rib. And your head's down on it. You're almost better off having that brutal face contact, at least seeing a bead, just to add to versatility. But we're not getting too far into this. We're not caring about sight pictures today. Um, the, the proviso is you're looking for a sight picture that you want, hence eye fit is important, but knowing what you want to see and how that gun shoots for you is important, hence it's for wise to do this at a point that you know what you're on about a little bit. Um, and I mean that in the nicest possible way. Shooting is a journey, more importantly that your body is a journey, so revisiting gun fit with your shooting style and your body at various points during your career is wise and I will say that as many times as possible because it will sink in. Length, no, grip. Your face is in the correct position, your pads in the correct position, those two are correlated so that your eye is in a consistent position over that rib. Grip. We all have grip preferences but grip fit is something that Actually, I do relatively rarely because people don't want to start attacking their wood. I haven't got a great, any, any great examples here, but there's a lot of things to think about with grip. We're gonna focus on pistol grips today, like, but all of these things do translate, I suppose, into straight hand stocks and Prince of Wales grips and all, all sorts of other semi-pistol grips. Before we talk about that, though, it is important that we talk about length. The length of a stock is important. The arm needs to be in a comfortable position, the neck needs to be in a comfortable position, the shoulder needs to be in a comfortable position. We're mounted at that, their sort of angle. That doesn't really bear much thought more talking about. You're looking for the perfect angle. People will use fingers on combs and all this kind of thing and, and sort of do this to size up guns, but just have someone look at you, have them watch you mount that gun, and you will, somewhere along the line, get a length that is correct. Length is important as a factor as part of this, but that sort of shoulder and face fit are just as important. The length is the vastly easier one to establish. Um, and hence, like I said, it doesn't bear too much talking or thinking about because it's these. One of the simpler ones to get. Factors of length. When you're going to shoot the gun, what clothing you're going to wear. If you want a faster gun, a slightly shorter stock is wise. If you want a slower gun, a slightly longer stock is wise. And we're playing with sixteenths of an inch here. There you go. Length. So getting the length correct will change how your angles of your hands sit and fit on the gun. So I just had a quick break. Grip, size, and shape are important for numerous reasons. Firstly, the length of your stock, the angle of your arm, the shape of your arm. You know, if you've got a short bicep and a long forearm, that's gonna lead your hand to a different position on the gun. From this, back to this, and actually you might want different positions. So in terms of things to think about with grip, Firstly, your hand size and shape probably is different to other people's. Secondly, what you're com comfortable gripping will be different to other people's. And to think that one sort of generic Beretta grip fits everyone is a little bit of madness. Not that it matters too much and it's not too much overthinking to be had. So, radius of the grip will matter. More upright grips are less versatile than more angled grips. More upright grips will allow you to have a shorter stock than more angled grips. Quite simple. Think now about the radius of a grip. 
Let me find. There you go. They're all, these are all slightly different. This gun here is actually, surprisingly, one of the biggest radiuses. And when I say radiuses, that there where your thumb falls in is thicker than this and thicker than this. Just because you have big hands doesn't need, mean you necessarily need a big gun. This is a personal preference thing, and it is a comfort factor as well. Too big a grip will give you a hand cramp. Too small the grip, and actually you'll find your fingers kind of touching or overlaying. You might just find you've got too much command of the gun. You should feel like you have a full control on that gun. Um, this is my grip. My hands are the thing I haven't changed over the years, and I cut it for my hand. I put no palm swirl on there, I'm not sure whether I regret that or not. I probably don't. I, I don't dislike a palm swell, but actually I quite like not having one. Having the versatility that that brings suits me, but my gun needs to be for everything. If this was just a sporting clays gun, I would probably have a pistol grip on it. So the actual radius, the depth, the width, and how those two things go together will affect how that gun feels in your hand. These things can be altered. Some guns is going to be harder than others, depending on how tall the action is and how the stock bolt lies, or how wide the action is and how that lies. They can be beefed up, you can have pistol grips enhanced and palm swells added, and you can have, well, it's a lot easier to take a, a full upright pistol grip back to a more of a swept back semi-pistol grip than it would be to do anything else. The actual cut for the thumb and how your hand falls on that grip is a personal preference as well. I was always taught that you would like your hand quite far down, so that when you pull that trigger, you are pulling it with the pad of the finger. However, I know people who also like pulling it with the second part of their hand, and they like strangling that gun. And they're quite good shots. Just be aware that grip is actually a really vital part of it. It's the part where you're gonna be controlling with your right hand that gun, you're using that for a lot of control, but it is important that you hold onto that gun and command it with that. So, width, height, length. Imagine also where you get that rise. So the nose of your stock there. One of the more common jobs to do is actually knocking that back by a quarter of an inch. Because if you do have big hands, a lot of these people, actually it's, it's that ball of your thumb there, it's imperative that that sits into a nice hole and that your fingers can wrap around something you're happy with. Like, so reducing that and actually making sure that your hand can fall and fit into the same place, similar place every time, as much as then it can be moved, moved for versatility is important. These things can be changed. The grip also goes for your left hand. There's different forends out there. Don't be afraid to reshape, remove wood to keep your left hand as comfortable as possible. Hand comfort is important, and for the sake of a little bit of wood butchery, getting a stock right or a forend right for your hand is absolutely vital. Think about these things. That is actually part of gun fit, the fit in the hand of both hands, and that will affect how comfortable you are, how much command you have the gun, how consistent you are when holding and picking up and using said gun. One, two, three, three, four, Five length. And that is more or less everything. I'm fairly confident that is more or less everything. There you go. Take away what you will. Where you hold the gun, sort of let's go in this reverse. Where you hold the gun on the forehand and grip and how you hold the gun on the forehand and grip and how that feels in your hand is of actual very much more importance than people put their weight into how the gun fits in the face, but also how it fits in the shoulder are of vital importance. Length, I kind of rushed over because I think everyone is aware that gun fit involves length at a very minimum. That's too long for you, that's too short for you. Everyone's willing to throw that in there because it's quite an obvious thing when somebody is, you know, this one's a standard Beretta. It's quite an obvious thing when someone's hunched up on a gun, you brought their shoulder up, they're smacking their face down, they're, they're all over it. However, as I said, the hidden part behind all of this is what and why. What are you going to do with it and why 
Do you want it that way? Because it's of vital importance, again, to any of these things, you're not gonna set a trap gun up the same as you are a game gun. One final thought. Who fits your gun is also very important. There are some very good gun fitters out there, and there are some perhaps less experienced gun fitters out there. This is worth investing in. If you're just going for a basic gun fit, look, check, see whether it's actually somewhere near, you don't need to see, it's called like a stage one gun fit. That all sounds a bit corporate. Somebody checking to make sure that you're looking down that rim and can mount that gun consistently without pulling the trigger. That's one thing. To go and have a stock made, it's very important that you actually shoot with someone, spend some serious time with someone. Because, guess what? They need to be able to see your ability, how you shoot, and all these things to make all of the best assessments about this. It is not a short process, it is a long process. But, quite an enjoyable one if you're getting a custom stock made. There you go. Guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Don't forget to like it, share it, subscribe it. Maybe even join as a member, as I said before, and go and check out our new merch because, well, we appreciate the support and it's quite cool.